Hello there. Welcome to another week in our <laughs> Hello there. Welcome to another week in our garden. It's turning out nice now, but it's very, very cold and white over with frost this morning. Beautiful frost. Now we're starting this week with a little bit of update on the ring I was doing. Different, the four ring, the spear if you like. I'll go through what I've done in the week trying to get this far and then we'll explain to you what we're doing. Now originally we set off making four on a 12 inch ring and once I got it strawed up it was that small I couldn't finish up working I would have finished up with just a ball of holly and conifer so we scrapped that idea and we went to 14 inch rings but instead of having four I reduced it to three and that would give more room to be able to see through when once it's been done now to get them to bend I've actually broke this one so that's a rejected one but it'll do for the demonstration to get them to bend I just put them on the bench and literally just press down to get the bend in it I, came, I stayed away from the support bracket so it would give more on the outside and then I put them together and what I did I just put some Gorilla Tape round them just to hold them together I'll show you how I did this this is the original but you can see I just put the bit of Gorilla Tape in there and it held them well I'll show you how I bent them. I just put it on the edge like that and I just pressed it like that. And this one is now for just um unpress on there you are, that's how we made them and we take them up. This one I should take apart, straighten them up again and use them in the in the rings. Having got this far we had to straw it up and when you're strawing it up it's best to take a good handful of straw and push it between if you can so you're getting round on there before you tie it on with your string that's the only difference I'll just show you on a normal one this is just a normal single ring you see how we do it bent on the top but when you do it like that you need to make it so you that thick because you'll be doing that edge that edge and then you want to bring that as well so that's how we strawed it up exactly the same as that but a little bit more on the back obviously to make it round once I'd got it strawed up I then conifered it I just went round putting bits of conifer on what I did put it in little groups like this all the same way though and now and again I added a bit of blue or anything that I can do it and then I wired it on facing down I just wired it on facing down was like that so we've got a completely green ring that made life easier than trying to put your everything on at once and then I put the groups of the cones on with the blue spruce behind obviously you don't get those cones on blue spruce but you do on here then I put the clusters of green holly on and then just put some variegated holly in and tied it in with a, a berry cluster and then wired it round and every time you wire it round push your wire in between and then it'll be out of sight and although it keep going I did two and a one two and a one I tried to break it up a little bit so it's something different the corners at the top I just put another cluster of cones on just to fill the gaps up I've left this little seat in the middle and what I should do is to get one of those battery packs 
that will do the lights and then I'll feed the lights through through and round the ring so we can just press the button there then I'll disguise that in a little bit of conifer when I finish now to have something hanging in here as well been lots and lots of thinking about what we're going to put in the middle but we think if we take maybe three of these shiny bars they're only plastic so that'll be fine and hang them in the middle could be four we don't know yet probably three because it'll fit better and they'll be hanging in the centre I can't really hold them to show you and then when the lights are on it will glisten onto the shiny baubles the only other thing that I did I don't know if you can see them while I was conifering I popped a little bit of tinsel I cut off about an inch of tinsel and bent it in half and wired that in as well so when the lights are on it will give a little bit of sparkle into there now the top I put hanging basket chains on to keep it stabilised so if you just had a single one I'm sure it would just spin round in the, uh, in the wind and I'm thinking if I pinch them together just under the top put a red ribbon with good tails on it hanging down that will give it a top yes you could put string another way if you've got some variegated ivy and plaited that down there anything you want down there that I'll go for the ribbon a nice red ribbon at the top as you can see there's all sorts of different holly in there what I've also done I've put some ivy so you've got holly and ivy for the tradition trying to turn everything so so you can see the variegated side if you get one that won't turn just cut it off but you can see there's ivy there there's holly there's golden conifer there's blue spruce there's a bit of everything in there i think it's turned out quite well a little bit more to finish with the battery pack and the lights on and the ribbon another thing to remind you is make sure you use good binding wire use binding wire then when you go to tie anything on you can put it in between you see it now and then when you go in between and it disappears into the the ring so you're not going to be if you had them green wires you'd be watching looking at green wires etc everything's tied in it's quite tough and i think it's turned out quite well I shall finish it this afternoon and evening we'll take it round the front and hang it where it belongs on a hanging basket bracket so you can see the finished article and I think what we'll do is let you see the lights on now I've strawed up all the rings that we want to do the ones that were taking up the village etc and a few for the house our friends want a couple as well so i strawed all these up ready now it's too early to really start these yet so we'll do these next week we will go through it again how we do the door rings and also i've got um a grave ring to make for somebody so i'll show you how it's a little bit different so we'll make that as well now when you're making a lot of holly rings like we i've been making them over the years and everybody seems to know oh cliff makes holly rings if you want one and word gets about and i also say to people if you ever got any variegated holly and you want it clipping i'll come and do it for you at the autumn so i can have the trimmings for making the rings now there's a nice gentleman up the village has decided he's taking his holly tree out well bush holly bush out so murray happens to mention that cliff will have that for his uh, for his holly ring it seems a shame to have been cut off it has been cut off so it will grow again from its root i've actually put in a tub in some water because i wanted to keep it fresh this is actually ilex aurea marginata aurea because of the yellow edge nice bush with it being me i shall probably be taking one or two cuttings off this as well 
and rooting them out so I can put them down the garden and we'll have our own. It's a lovely bush so it's worth doing it. Many, many thanks to our friend down the village for supplying that. Appreciate that. Conifer, we've got plenty of conifer in the garden. All the cones have come locally. Jam has picked up quite a few for me. One or two we've picked up ourselves. We pick them up in the summer if you can so you can dry them out and then they open up. If they're fully tightened up you'll find that they won't open. Worth remembering if you're doing things. Now we need to do some gardening as well today. This is what we're going to put on the garden. It's volcanic rock dust. It's got all the minerals and nutrients, trace elements for the beds. So we'll nip down and put some of this on. This is bed C. This will be for the brassicas and there'll be four tunnels going along it. The tunnel that the onions are in, if you remember last week, that will come off there and go on here with a new, there'll be four new covers on four, four tunnels for the brassicas. I have just dug this over this morning, I, it'll all be single dug, no manure or anything and then left to harden over the winter. Now we don't put manure on this bed, on bed C, because it's for the brassicas. The only manure we put on was well rotted that is in the bottom spit of the double dug bed there that is for the cauliflowers if you can remember, but that is very very deep. Now I'm going to put these trace elements and nutrients on and this will be the bed, bed C, the brassica bed every year that I'll put the nutrients on. We can't put the nutrients on the bed we're going to put the onions in or the potatoes because we put manure in and you don't want to be putting trace elements onto freshly manured ground. If you do, it will lock up the nitrogen in the ground and won't release it to your plants. I'll show you how I'm going to put the rock dust, minerals or whatever you want to call it on. Remember it'll only be done on the brassica bed in the rotation so although we do it now it'll be four years before it's done again. Now this is it lot. It's uh, rock dust but it's got all your minerals and trace elements that you want for your garden in it. Now what they say is it's one handful to a square yard. So for this little piece here, what we've got, one, two, about three and a half, maybe four hands full for this piece, which is more or less what's in the bottle. Now all I've done to this, I've just forked it over and that'll be left now to harden down because the brassicas want it solid. So that's the only thing I'm going to do to this and then sprinkle this on as well. Don't do it if there's a lot of wind because it will just blow it everywhere. You just, you see, and just work your way along. I'll do this side and then I'll do that side. Little bit of wind out here so that's okay. So put back half a bottle to a side. A little bit more of this end. Because I'm putting a tunnel on, there'll be a walkway between each tunnel, which I'm going to put bark on. A little bit in the middle just here, you know. a little bit along the edge you could miss. That's this end that I've just quickly dug for you to show you. Now when the celeriac and the rest of the Swedes are gone and there's a few onions at the top to go yet, 
when they're cleared I'll dig that and do exactly the same up there we'll let it winter it'll wash in naturally on its own then we'll put the tunnel on and start that'll be spring now see the white canes so I know where to prepare the land for each tunnel tunnel that will go on here will have this will be the cauliflower the broccoli the purple sprouting that's got that manure very very deep down it's a good two foot down and then the top has just been dug limed and left so what I'll do with this I use can you remember me buying this because mine have worn out so I'm going to wear this one out doing it now through the winter on all these beds as they dry out a little bit this one's dried out a little, one or two weeds coming up so I'm just going to keep breaking it backwards and forwards keep messing it about that's that's the thing if you get a weed just turn it sideways and knock the weed out and I just keep doing that leveling as I go and then it'll just keep the top down let the weather do the work and then you just you just rake it once the frost has done its job some pine that's coming now started up as as lumpy as that but just let the weather do the work for you we'll move on to the next tunnel and show you what we've already planted in there remember the leaks you see will be gone and that will be another bed prepared for another tunnel the before tunnel this will be the next tunnel obviously the leaks will be gone I've actually been walking up and down there and it's got very very hard so I put the fork in and broke it so I'm letting the the weather break that up and then I'll just fork that over when we do the bed exactly the same we dug through we'll put the rock dust on it for the minerals and in the spring do a lime test and then add the lime for the brassicas this bed will be for the brassicas the cabbage we'll also put the kohlrabi in here we'll put the celeriac in here the lettuce will go along as well there'll be quite a lot of stuff in them so we really need to prepare them properly final tunnel this has already been planted this will be all the early spring cabbages there's uh, kale in there as well and I think there's one or two spring cauliflowers in there they'll be all ready for the spring they're doing quite well slugs are having a bit of a field day but they'll stop when it gets a bit colder so that's the completion of bed C now we'll move on to our new bed which is bed D this is the new bed that had some fruit trees in but weren't doing very very well at all but having dug it the soil is so, so shallow I think that was the problem with the trees the clay was so hard you couldn't get through it now if you remember this this year we had the pumpkin frame on here and the squashes were all climbing up nicely now they've moved up for next year they'll be in bed A which will be prepared nicely for them and we're going to put the potatoes in here, main crop I've dug the bed and with it being a bit shallow soil I've put manure on top and I'm going to let that wash down and weather a little bit and then turn it again I'll have to wait for Mark to bring me another load of horse muck and then I should bring it all the way down. I'm nhearly there. The rhubarb's all been done, it's just that little section here to do. Now that's bed D sorted out, it's just going to be dug through potatoes and then we'll take it from there. The potatoes will be a good cleaning crop in it. Along this border here I've already dug in some manure I shall dig it some more in because I'm thinking I'm going to put a good row of celery along here we had tomatoes in here this year outdoor tomatoes they was doing very very well until the blight got them but the the color was good 
they made good plants so we know the soil's pretty good and it's a little bit deeper this side than what it is that side as you can see i have mulched the fruit trees that is garden compost it's not manure that's out of our bins i will at some stage over the next week I'm going to pop some Epsom salts around them as well to give them a bit of a boost in the spring. Let it wash down to the roots, that will do them the world of good. So if we can get this bed nicely dug and I'll dig some more manure in it and probably some of our own if I've got enough left and we'll put a nice double row of celery along here I think they'll do rather well so that's the beds done I hope you've, you've understood all that it's quite complicated but it's simple you just keep moving on the rotation every year and it'll, it'll be fine now if you're not quite clear on anything that, that I'm doing on the rotation do ask and we'll let, you, we'll let you know how we're doing it. Fruit trees still got a few leaves on as soon as they've dropped them we'll give them a good winter wash but that'll be probably next year now. <laughs> that'll be it for today it's getting quite cold down here and I think we're ready for a cup of tea okay. <laughs> We're now somewhat later in the afternoon, it's turning bitterly cold. But I have finished the ring as far as I'm going today. We have finished it as far as I can go today. A little bit undecided still about the ribbon at the top, but we'll, we'll find something for up there. The lights are on, they're not flashing, thank goodness, but we can have them flashing. If I just slowly turn it, you'll see it. Quite a bit of work, but well worth it. Look at that, it's beautiful. Very nice ring. Now, I know we've got plastic berries because if you put real ones on the birds, you'll take them. But we've kept it as much as possible to natural stuff that we've got out of the garden and the surrounding woodland around here. And I'm quite pleased with that. <coughs> now, I've brought the the spear as we like to call it now round the back I'll take it back down to the chickens because Diane says it's too early to leave on the front and so that'll be it for this week I hope you've enjoyed it do have a go at making one of these and next week we'll show you how we're going to do the normal rings so have a nice weekend keep warm and many many thanks for the people who subscribed and thank you for watching us Okay, bye now.